Kia ora everybody, Chris Fahi here from the Bailey's Insights team. I'm joined today by Rua Tapuki from Vega, who are our preferred mortgage advisors, to have a chat about the triple CFA and its impact on the housing market and I guess on the lending market. So kia ora. Kia ora Chris. Yeah, f- thanks for coming in. Um, so triple CFA, <coughs> can you tell us a little bit like in a nutshell what it is? So it's the Credit Contracts and Consumer Finance Act. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Basically, it's a mechanism put in place to keep borrowers safe. In December, they rolled in the new changes. What we've seen is the banks have been applying some really rigid criteria. And, and what's that, what that's meant is that really good customers uh, that could afford the loans that they were applying for were getting declined. Yeah, okay. um, yeah and, and so... It, is that like actual <laughs> declines or is that like ask for more information? Like what's the, what's um, the sort of scope of it? Yeah, it was really, it's been really unpredictable. Uh, So in some instances, uh, people were able to pivot back and um, and clarify things uh, for the assessors, but a lot of times people were getting declined um, when they shouldn't have been. Has it hit a particular part of the market more than others? Because I guess at face value, you'd assume it's probably going to hit those in the lower price brackets, maybe um, slightly tighter income or Mm. lower wealth. Yeah, first home buyers were definitely hit harder, yeah. but as I said before, yeah, customers that had existing mortgages and had shown that they're in a strong financial position, probably less likely to get straight declines, yeah. but uh, the process was made a lot more difficult for them. It's interesting because um, <coughs> like if I think about myself, if, um, if our bank looked into my spending habits on coffee and stuff like that, they'd probably be like, Chris, cut it out. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, and so more recently, I think, it, I'm going to say it was 11 March, I, I might be wrong, but the government announced some changes to the triple CFA um, around, uh, I guess, getting rid of some of the, the silly aspects of, of how um, it was being implemented. What, what's the impact that that's had um, right now, and like, how do, how do you think it's going to track out over the next coming months? Yes, so it, it, it's definitely starting to relax now. Yep. So the, so the banks are no longer will no longer be viewing savings and investing um, as outgoings, yep. um, which makes, which makes sense. sense. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes sense, and so they're no longer going to have to trawl through um, customers' expenses, uh, you know, bank statements to confirm their expenses. Okay. One of the questions we had from looking at the announcements is it looks like they officially take place in like June, um, but you'd also think that they'd start implementing them early. Like what, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, we, we, we're definitely seeing uh, on the bank side because they've been frustrated as, as well. Yep. So so they're seeing the explanation around how hip beha- spending behaviours are going to change going forward. Yep. And they're accepting that as opposed to saying no, um, you know, give us three three bank statements showing those new behaviours being implemented. What, what what are your tips around how to navigate this whole thing? Because uh, I guess at face value, like I, I know when we got our um, our place, we used a mortgage advisor just to streamline everything. Um, and I could see how if you were trying to do it direct, it's going to be a real like real painful process. Mm. Um, what, what's your recommendations? I definitely recommend discussing your situation with a Vega broker. Yep, 100%, 100% <laughs> Vega. Yep, yep. yep. The usual things um, that are going to be sensible in any climate, yep. those things ring true even more, more so now. So looking at the liabilities that you have and tidying those up. So, you know, reducing your credit card debt, um, personal loans, things like that, tidying that stuff up. And that's things that you should be doing anyway. Yep. One of the things that stuck out in on like the housing market side is the need to get your pre-approval sorted early. And I think if you went back historically, some people would almost have their property like pretty much going into the auction and just getting their pre-approval sorted. Mm. But it sounds like now you actually need to get things lined up way a lot earlier. Yeah, definitely. And we're sort of heading into a buyer's market now. So, you know, being pre-approved puts you in a really strong negotiating position yeah. if that auction falls over. Well, look, we might wrap up there because um, this has been a very interesting conversation. So um, once again, thanks very much Rua, for uh, coming in and having a bit Cheers, of a chat, Chris. particularly Friday afternoon. Um, with that said, we'll wrap up here. And if you do want to learn a little bit more about what's happening in the mortgage market or, you know, maybe you need a pre-approval or some proper advice, feel totally welcome to reach out to Rua and the crew at Vega. They'd be super happy to chat. So, um, yeah, with that said, we'll wrap up here. Cheers, Chris. Much.